Welcome everyone to Therapeutic Yoga class today. Our class today is on this thing right here, the heart. So we're going to do a little bit of some mechanical work on our heart. Yes, that's possible to do with your hands and your breath. And then we're going to spend our class today doing heart opening poses. Now, what exactly does that mean in the yoga world? Well, it means that we're going to spend a lot of time on our rib cage. So we're going to be working on opening our chest, opening our thoracic spine. Um, and if we stayed purely in the yoga world, the whole idea of that is to open your your heart. Like if you imagine just crack out, cracking open a nut, that's the idea of it. From the physical therapy side of it, what oftentimes happens when you do a heart opening class is because you're spending so much time focusing on the rib cage and opening up through the front of the chest, oftentimes the extra benefit is for the rest of the day, your neck, your shoulders, and your low back feel just absolutely fantastic. So I don't care which side we live on, it's a really good thing to work on. So what you're going to need for your class today are three simple things, a yoga mat, a chair, but definitely a chair without arms today, and also a yoga bolster. So once you have all of those things, go ahead and find yourself in a seated position on your chair, and we will begin. So what you're going to want to do is put yourself in the front half of your chair. So make sure you're not using the back support of your chair. And once you have yourself in that position, position your feet so that your arches of your feet are directly underneath your knees and that your feet and your knees are approximately hip distance apart. So that's two fists, give or take, for different individuals. Once you have yourself in that position, what we want to do before we do a some heart opening is let's get ourselves in a decent alignment in unsupported sitting. So just roll your pelvis forward and backward a few times so you can appreciate where your sit bones are well relative to, to your chair. If it feels like you cannot roll forward because your chair is too low, just go grab a, a pillow or something right now and put that pillow underneath you so you bring the height of the chair up a little tiny bit. Um, but just roll yourself a couple of times, feel where that sit bone is, which is the highest point on that pelvis for most of us. And then in that position, kind of get your rib cage and uh, nice and tall. Let's do a quick little opening for getting our chest open and get our shoulder blades connected to our rib cage. So place your hands in the center of your heart right now, palms together, fingertips all touching one another. Just take a nice gentle inhale, lift the arms up and just gently turn the arms down. And as you're coming down, allow yourself now to turn the palms open. So as you do that, you'll feel that rib cage change relative to your shoulder blades. Now, stay there for a second. Give yourself a nice good squeeze of those shoulder blades. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Rest your hands onto your thighs and take a moment to check in if you feel like there's weight down through your legs. So if you can easily pick your weight uh, legs up right now, you've got all your weight still in your low back and your pelvis. So from your hip joints, just gently bring a little bit of weight onto your hands, therefore a little bit of weight into your feet. And make sure you can't pick them up and then you're in a nice, good position to start class. Now, here's what I want us to do today. We are going to work our heart indirectly through one of our parasympathetic nerves. So your parasympathetic nerve that we're going to focus on is our vagus nerve. V-A-G-U-S, not like Las Vegas, but V-A-G-U-S. And it runs behind a muscle here in your neck. So we're going to begin with opening up a little bit of length in that muscle. And then we're actually going to treat lengthening that nerve today. So placing your hands onto your thighs, getting that nice long neck position, allowing your chin to gently settle into your throat. All I want you to do right now is make sure those shoulder blades are engaged on that rib cage. Take a nice deep inhale and on your exhale, just gently let your head side bend to the left. So now that your head is side bent to your left, take another nice inhale and then on the exhale, gently rotate the chin up to the right. Now, make sure when you rotate your chin up to the right, the eyes also go up there. So you should be looking somewhere to the right up onto your ceiling. 
Allow yourself, if you think that your right shoulder blade lifted all the way up, to kind of gently pull that left shoulder blade down. Hold yourself in this position and take a nice, slow, deep inhale into your belly. And then gently exhaling out sternocleidomastoid muscle. That's what we're putting a little bit of length in right now. Let's do that again. Nice, deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. So derotate the head and then unside bend the head. You've got it. Let's try that on the opposite side. So take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, gently side bend the head to the right. And then once you have yourself there, nice deep inhale. Exhale, rotate the head to the left. So make sure you stay in your side bend and the rotation is through your head, doing a little bit for those upper uh, cervical joints, but really we're focusing on that sternocleidomastoid joint or muscle today. So now in this position, make sure that you are looking up to the left ceiling while you're in this position. Pay attention that that left shoulder didn't elevate. So maybe pull that shoulder blade a little bit back and down. Feel that beautiful length on that left side. All right, maybe even a smile on your face today. Let's do two diaphragmatic breaths here. So nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Unrotate the head and then unside bend the head. You've got it. So we're going to do it one more time on each side. This time when we do it, what I want you to focus on is that you feel length in the side of your neck. You may feel some pinching in your upper neck, particularly if you've got some C12 problems with your upper neck issue. Don't push into pain. But see if you can find that length in the side of your neck. All right. So shoulder blades back and down. Make sure you've got weight into your feet. Let's try this one more time. So take a nice deep inhale and then on the exhale, side bend your head to the left. And then nice deep inhale here. Exhale, rotate your head up to the right. Gaze up to the right as far as you can see. Check in that you're keeping the side bend. Check in that you've got the rotation and the eyes are up there. Now this right shoulder blade, use the muscles of your shoulder blade to pull it back and down. As you do that, you should feel that clavicle drop and that opening through that sternal clinovastoid muscle. Two diaphragmatic breaths here. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Beautiful. Unrotate the head first and then unside bend the head. You've got it. Let's do it one more time. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, side bend to the right. Then nice deep inhale. Exhale, rotate to the left. So as you're rotating, make sure that neck is long. Make sure there's weight into your feet, but bring that gaze up to the left. Okay, you've got yourself there in that position. Can you take that left shoulder blade and pull it down? Collarbone goes down with that shoulder blade. Feel that opening through that muscle on that left side. Yeah. All right, smile on the face. Let's go into a nice deep diaphragmatic breath here. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out, you've got it now. Unrotate the head, unside bend the head. By the way, that muscle that we were just working on, if you've ever heard of the term torticollis, oftentimes happens in babies. That's the muscle that is the muscle of interest for stretching. So what we just did for stretching that muscle is exactly one of the exercises you would do for torticollis. All right, so back to this vagus nerve, right? It's a heart opening class. So here's what I want you to do now. Nobody can see you at home, but what I need you to do is I want you to take your right hand and place your right hand on your sternum bone, on your chest. So make sure that there's skin to skin on that hand and on that chest. Once the right hand is on that sternum bone and on that chest, the left hand is coming on top of the right hand. So it's kind of like you're stacking your hands on top of your sternum bone. All right, now that you're in that position, check in that there's weight into your feet. Take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, lengthen your neck and settle your chin. Okay, you may be already feeling pulling in the front of your neck, allowing some length of that vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. Okay, now that you have 
that length in your neck. Here's what we're going to do first. We're going to rotate our head. So take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, rotate your head to the right. That's creating that length to the nerve and all of those tissues on the right side of your neck. Check in that your chin is tucked gently in as your neck is long. Feel that beautiful length through there. Push down with your hands on your skin. Take a deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Slowly bring your head back to the center, pushing those hands down onto your uh, sternum bone and your rib cage. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Okay, now we're going to do the rotation to the left. So nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, turn that head to the left. Get that chin with you. You'll feel that pulling on the left side of your throat this time. That's where that nerve sits. Hold yourself in this position. Nice, deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice, deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Beautiful, bringing your head back to the center. All right, now, by the way, I should have mentioned this already, cardiac pacemakers or any sort of implants in your chest, you're safe to do this. Just don't push really, really hard with your hands because you'll just make yourself sore, but you're fine to do this. You're not gonna let go of any leads or wires. But if you have any concern, whatever, do not do this. So here's the next and last thing we're doing to open up that vagus nerve, therefore, allowing ourselves to relax our heart, since that is the nerve that supplies our heart on the parasympathetic nervous system side. So keep those hands on your chest, take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, now really push those hands and your chest down. As you do that, you kind of feel your rib cage fall forward. All right, now, lengthen the neck, settle the chin. I think you should probably be able to feel that tension in the front of your throat here. Now, can you keep your neck nice and long? And then in this position, allow yourself to take an inhale. And as you exhale, gently lift the chin up to the ceiling. Oh boy, does that feel good. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. Slowly relaxing down. One last time. Deep inhale in. Exhale, push that rib cage down, skin to skin, so that you're pulling the superficial fascia and all of the fun stuff near that. Keep yourself in that position. Take a nice deep inhale and on your exhale, lengthen through that neck, settle your chin. All right, pushing that chin down. Last time, I'm tighter on my left side. Allow yourself to take that inhale and on that exhale, lengthen that neck nice and high. Oh boy, that feels so good. Nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. And then slowly relaxing the head back down, <sighs> relaxing the arms. It is a lot of work to push your chest down. All right. So we are officially done with working that vagus nerve. So now what we're going to do is spend the remainder of class opening up through our chest, our thoracic spine, and our rib cage. So let's start with taking our hands, interlacing our fingers in front of us, turning our palms, give a nice good stretch through those forearm muscles, holding yourself right here, checking in that there's weight into your legs. Take a nice deep inhale, and as you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, lift your chest, lengthen through your neck, and then as you exhale, curl the rib cage down, chin to chest, take those hands and bring them all the way down to your thighs. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling, lifting up with those arms, lifting up with that chest, lifting up with that neck, beautiful elongation through the front of your body, and then exhaling, curl the rib cage down, bring the arms down, bring the chin to the chest. And one last time, inhaling, lifting the arms, lifting the chest, lifting the head. Boy, does that feel good. And exhale, dropping the chin to chest as the arms come down and curling that rib cage down. Very nice. Relaxing your shoulders, maybe doing a couple of circles with your shoulders, and then bringing your hands in front of you, palms together. 
weight is into your feet. You haven't lost your pelvis position. We're going to be opening up our hands nice and wide here. So take an inhale and open up as wide as you can. Reach behind you as far as you can. And then as you exhale, slowly drop those hands to touch in front again. Two more times. Inhaling, opening. Let your chest lift a little bit, maybe even your neck. But it's all about squeezing those shoulder blades together. And then as you exhale, slowly coming back. Let's do one more time. Inhaling, lengthening, 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 and then exhaling and bringing them back together. Beautiful job. Relax down, do some shoulder circles. All right, so we're going to do some really interesting opening with our body using our chair today. So we're going to start with allowing ourselves to take your right leg and turn your right leg to the right side of your chair but you're not gonna bring your rib cage with you. So let yourself sit back on the chair so that you find that point where you're just seeing your heel touch the floor. The entire right leg is going to be in contact with the chair so you don't have to worry about your chair tipping. Now with your left leg, what I want you to do is I want you to try to bring that left leg behind you and out to the side of you. Now with your right hand, Keep your right hand on your right knee because it's going to have a tendency to want to do this and fall inward. So just let it stay there. You'll feel that beautiful opening through your pelvis and your adductor muscles. Now, here's what I want you to try to do. Line up the left foot with the top or the bottom of your mat and then take your pelvis and try to rotate your pelvis to the front of your chair. And so you should feel that the foot is lined up forward. You should feel that the pelvis is lined up forward. The left sit bone has kind of fallen off the side of that chair, but that right leg is nice and open. Knee is in line with those second toes. All right, so stay right here for me. Bring your arms gently straight out to the side. So you're in a modification of a warrior two pose here. So here's what I want you to do. Turn your palms down, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and then rotate your head towards your right third finger. Imagine if you can here that your third finger is lined up with your second toe, your right arm is lined up with your right leg, your left arm is lined up with your left leg, your chest is nice and open, you've got that rotation of the neck, so we're creating that length through that left vagus nerve. All right. Now that we've got all the pieces of the puzzle, can you hold this and breathe here? So give me a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more beautiful breath, nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Unrotate your head and then relax your arms, but don't move your legs. See if you can keep your legs in this position, your rib cage in this position. All right, we're going to do a nice, beautiful opening for the left side body here. So see if you've got sufficient flexibility to rest your right elbow down onto your right leg. Now, when that happens, make sure that the left leg doesn't ah, come off the floor. So try to push that left leg back down onto the floor. Can you find the position to stack that right shoulder over that right leg? And then here's what I want you to do. Really rotate that pelvis, really rotate that rib cage open. All right, here's the best part. Left arm, take a nice deep inhale, kick it up and out to the side. And then as you exhale, can you lift it nice and high to the ceiling? You may not be able to see my hand up there, but I promise you it's up there. All right, let's integrate that nerve in our neck so that we are heart opening today. So lengthen your neck, settle your chin and turn your gaze up to that left thumb. All right, so here we are in a beautiful pose. Allow yourself to gaze at that thumb, keep your neck long, your chin tucked. Take a deep inhale into your belly here. Then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and then exhaling out. Now, before we leave, take a deep inhale, reach your left fingertips away from you. And then as you exhale, 
How high can you reach that arm up and over you? Yes, look at that length. You're getting through the length, left side of your body, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Give me a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. One more breath, nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out, beautiful left arm, inhale it up and then exhale, dropping it down as the body comes up and then swinging that left leg in and unrotating that right leg. Lots of great opening for that right hip. So now let's do it all over again on the opposite side. So allow yourself to get the correct position of the left leg first because the entire left leg bone needs to be on the chair. You're having it so that your left foot is just vertical or left shin bone is vertical and the foot is right next to that chair. Once you feel like, yep, I've got myself in the right position, then start to walk that right leg back. Once you walk that right leg back, keep the left hand onto the left knee so that you get that beautiful opening through the left hip and the adductor or inner thigh muscles. Now check in with that right leg. And can you get that right foot so it lines up, the outside of the foot lines up with the uh, top or bottom of your mat, depending on where your mat is positioned. All right, now the only thing we have left to do for this lower half of the body is to rotate this pelvis so that the pelvis is facing forward in the chair. You should feel the opening in the left leg, the opening in the right leg. All right, that's the beautiful position we're gonna keep with our legs. Let's go into a gorgeous warrior two here. So take an inhale and lift your arms up and away from you. And once you have that, nice, de- nice, good lengthening of your neck, settling of your chin. Let's do one more nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, rotate that head, get that chin in line with that he- arm if you can on the left side gazing at that third tip of your finger on that left arm. Now let's figure out our alignment here. So imagine that that third finger lines up with the second toe on that left side. The arm lines up with the leg bone and that right arm is lining up with that right leg bone. Keeping that neck long, that chin tucked, getting that beautiful length through the side of your neck where that nerve is. Let's take a nice deep inhale into our belly here. And then exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Now from this position, slowly drop your arms down, unrotate your head. And then we're going to take this left elbow and place the left elbow onto the left leg. So getting that opening, once you're there, rotate that pelvis, rotate that rib cage nice, nice and, and open. And then in this position, once you have all that, check in that your neck is long, your chin is tucked, right arm, inhale it up to the side. And then as you exhale, lengthen it all the way up to the ceiling. You've got it. Now lengthen your neck, settle your chin and rotate that gaze up to that right thumb. Oh, are you feeling your right inner thigh, your left inner thigh, the length through your right low back, the length through the left neck? And here it is all about the heart, huh? All right. So keep gazing at that thumb. Give me a nice deep inhale here. And an exhale. One more nice deep inhale. And exhaling. All right. Now, those right fingertips. Inhale, reach them really high away. And then exhale, reach up and over your body. Find that length as much as you can on the right side of your body. Let's breathe here. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. One more breath. Nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Beautiful inhale, lifting the right arm up, lifting the body up and dropping the right arm down and then swinging that right leg in, turning that left leg, finding yourself back on your chair. Now we're going to do a nice good opening for our low back here before we get off of our chair. So if there's anything in front of you, make sure to move it out of the way. And once you've done that, make sure that you're in the front half of your chair. And today, what I'd like you to do is to take your legs wider than your chair. 
And once you have your legs wider than your chair, we're going to do a sequential flexion of our entire spine here. So start with your hands on your thighs so that you've got that support. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and then start to curl your neck under, bringing that chin to your chest. And then as you continue normally breathing, start to turn that rib cage under. Imagine each spinal segment is curling under as you slowly drop yourself. When you get to the point that you can see underneath your chair, keep gazing underneath your chair. When you get to the point that there's lots of healthy weight onto your hands, onto your thighs, then slowly begin to drop your hands to the floor. Keep lengthening as you're curling. Allow yourself, if you can, to have such great length through your neck and your chin. You're actually looking at the underside of the chair. Now let's stay in this position. Get that neck nice and long, that chin nice and tucked in. And take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And then exhaling out. Deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Now start at your feet and push your feet into the floor. And as you push your feet into the floor, imagine your tailbone being the first thing that tucks under. And then your pelvis and then the, the lowest part of your low back. And then keep continually curling everything up as you're sequentially doing extension, I'm actually shaking today. I guess I didn't do a neck exercise the last couple of days. Keep curling up, shoulder blades then come down. And then the final thing to come up would be your neck and your head. You did it. So a really good exercise, not only to open the entire spine, but also to strengthen the entire spine. All right, so back to the heart. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're not done with the chair, but we're going to get down onto our knees and use the chair as a supportive device for our elbows. So allow yourself to kind of come off of your chair, come down onto your knees, and then just gently turn your chair so that your chair is on your yoga mat. Now, if you don't like being on your knees, one good thing you can do right now is double, triple, quadruple your yoga mat so you've got lots of padding underneath your knees. Uh, very beneficial if you're that person that doesn't so much so like to have a lot of pressure on their knees. Now, I want you to put yourself in the position that your knees are hip distance and that you can drop your forearms down to the chair, but you don't feel like you're sitting all the way back. So there's a little bit of room to sit back because that's what we're going to be working on doing. So once you have yourself in this position, here's where I want you to begin. Take your left arm and line the forearm up with the front of the chair. And then take your right hand and reach and grab the back of the chair if you can. If there's any sort of pedestals or something, maybe grab those, but I'm not responsible if you break your chair. <laughs> take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, sit yourself back so that the forehead is kind of rested on that left forearm. And then you can feel that length all the way down to your right low back. Now, here's what I want you to do in this position. Just allow yourself to imagine that you're wagging your tail a little bit and kind of as you wag your tail, find that greatest amount of length through that rib cage and the low back on the right side. Take a nice deep inhale here into the belly. Then exhaling out. Imagine that entire chest dropping down to the floor. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. And then bringing yourself back up until you find the position that your knees and your hips are stacked one on top of the other. Once you find that position, allow yourself to either pull your chair forward or walk yourself forward so that you can comfortably put every bit of weight that you can through that left forearm that's still running the front of the chair. All right, now here's what I want you to do in this position. Your right leg, lift your right leg and line the heel of your right leg up with the bottom of your left foot. Very, very nice. And then right hand, take a nice deep inhale, lift it up into the sky, reaching nice and tall, lengthen through your neck, settle your chin, and then turn your gaze to that right thumb. 
You've got it. Now, can you hold this beautiful balance pose? Make sure you're kind of rotating your pelvis forward. Make sure that your chest is nice and open. Take a deep inhale into your belly here. And then exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Unrotating the head and the arm and the body back to the chair, settling that knee back down onto the floor, and now coming onto your elbows, interlacing your hands together, walking your feet back out as far as you can until you get your upper arms parallel to the floor. Let me repeat that. Upper arms parallel to the floor. So it's kind of like your shoulders, your elbows, and your hips are all stacked. Find that position. Take a nice deep inhale here, and then as you exhale, slowly drop your head down between your arms. Feel that gorgeous opening through your rib cage and your chest. Taking a deep inhale into your belly here, and exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out, slowly bringing the weight back forward, walking your hands and your knees inward. And we're going to do it all over on the left side. So I am simply going to move my chair to the opposite side of my yoga mat. You do what works for you. So start with yourself that your knees are hip distance. Your hips are stacked on top of your knees and bring your hands onto the chair. Then with the right hand, the forearm of it runs to the front of your chair. And then with your left hand, reach to that very back of the chair and grab a hold. Then in this position, position, take a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, start to sit back. Rest the crown of your head onto your forehead. Sit, sit, sit until you feel that stretch through that low back on that left side. Once you're there and you're sitting nice and good, maybe wag your tail a little bit to get a better stretch. Yep, for me, a little wag to the right helps me a little bit more. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. Then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Beautiful, slowly bringing yourself out of that lat stretch and then allowing yourself to keep that right arm in that position on that chair. The right leg stays exactly where it is, but simply turn the left leg open. Now here's the alignment cue. Try to get the left heel to line up with the right foot. That's where you're trying to be. So if you could imagine right upper arm and elbow lines up with the right knee, with the right shin bone, with the left heel. That's the alignment you're trying to get onto the floor. And then let's add the left arm now. So take a nice deep inhale and really open up nice and high. Get that pelvis turned, rib cage turned. Feel that length and opening through the front of your chest of your heart. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and turn that gaze towards that beautiful left thumb. All right, here we have it. Now, can you, in this position, take a nice deep inhale into your belly and then exhaling out. Keep that chin tucked in a little bit. Nice deep inhale into the belly. Open that pelvis. And exhaling out, dropping the hand down, unrotating the head, unrotating the trunk and the pelvis. All right, last thing with this chair, I promise. So we're doing the exact same mobilization we did the first time. So what you're doing is dropping yourself onto your elbows, palms come together, slowly start to walk yourself out until you feel like you've got your upper arms, upper arms parallel to the mat or to the floor or to the chair or whatever. Imagine if you can, your shoulders, your elbows and your hips are kind of all stacked in alignment. All right, now, if you wanna be super hard this time, see if you can bring your elbows together. Nice deep inhale, and then as you exhale, kind of drop that head between those arms and really try to drop that chest down towards the floor. Holding this position for two breaths. Nice deep inhale into the belly, and exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly, 
and exhaling out beautiful slowly coming up i know that's hard to believe that that opens your chest but it does such a beautiful job of creating thoracic extension at the top of your head or the top of your uh, thoracic spine okay now here's what i want you to do we are done with our chair so just slowly take your chair out of the way and then since you're already down on the floor just meet me in child's pose and we will begin there Okay, so here we are in child's pose. Let's just check in with all of our beautiful alignment cues. So are your knees about hip distance back, um, apart as you gaze back at your feet? Can you see that your feet run parallel with your knees and your hips? Rest the upper arms on the floor here. So no major stretch through the rib cage right now. But can you lengthen your neck, settle the chin, and get your crown and the head as close to the floor as you can? If you've got stiffness that doesn't allow your crown of your head to get to your floor, you can always bring your hands in and just kind of rest your hands onto the crown of your head. You never want to have your neck kind of dangling in the air. So figure out for you which is the best way to do your child's pose, either supporting the crown of your head or having the crown of your head to your floor. I think I'm going to hang out right here today. All right, whichever way you are, you're gazing back at your toes. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. And let's do that again. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Now, from this position, slowly bring yourself up on the hands and knees. Knees should be uh, uh, hip width apart here, so you should be already good. You're having your hand shoulder width apart. So hands are slightly wider apart than your knees. Index fingers are facing forward. Thumbs are inward. Wrists and elbows stack on top, underneath the shoulders. Okay, let's just go through a couple, a couple of cat cows here. So take a nice deep inhale. Sink the belly. Lift the tailbone. Drop the rib cage. Shoulder blades back and down. Lengthen that neck and look upward. And then as you exhale, push into the arms. Spread the shoulder blades apart. Chin to chest. Tuck that tailbone under. Arch through that low back. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, sink the belly. Lift the tailbone. Shoulder blades are back and down. Lift that chest, lengthen through that neck and gaze upward. And then as you exhale, push into those arms. Spread the shoulder blades, chin to chest. Tuck that tailbone under. Belly goes in as the spine curls up. And last time, inhale. Now, can you inhale as you're thinking of all of those different cues? And then as you exhale and exhale and exhale and exhale, still thinking of those cues. You got it. All right. So come back to the neutral position. In the neutral position, allow yourself to take your right hand and place the right hand in the center of your mat. So wherever your left and your right hand just were, you're going to take that right hand now and place it in the center of your mat. Allow yourself to get that index finger pointed forward and literally push your shoulder blades away from the floor. So engage through that right shoulder with that left arm. Take an inhale, lift it up. And as you exhale, how high can you lift that left, tail, uh, left arm in the air? Can you lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and rotate up towards that left thumb? Oh, hello, heart. This is a nice, good heart opening. Allow yourself to stay right here. Take a nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. One more breath. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out, hand and head come down to the mat. We're going to switch that. So your left hand is now into the center of the mat. Allow it if you can see that your index finger is forward and the hand kind of settles between both of the hips or both of the knees, sorry. Then with that left hand, push yourself up away, engage the shoulder, engage through the uh, shoulder blade and rib cage. Then with the right hand, lift it up to the side and lift and gaze up to that right thumb, lengthen your neck, settle your chin as you're gazing, holding yourself in this chest opening on the right side. Give me a nice deep inhale into the belly. Sorry, my back is facing away from you, exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Beautiful, gently bringing the right hand down. Now grabbing your bolster and placing your bolster onto your yoga mat. We are going to go through some 
extension of the thoracic spine. Now, we're gonna be putting our rib cage up and over this bolster today. For some of us that have really sensitive low backs, you need to be careful that you don't create that extension in your low back. Ditto for those that have real sensitivity in their neck. So I'm gonna show you some tricks to help you be able to do nice, good extension of the thoracic spine, heart opening, over a bolster without causing any problems to your low back or causing any low problems to your neck. So allow yourself to roll onto your side. Your shoulder blades are ultimately what you want to have laying on top of the bolster today. So lay down so that the armpit of the top of the bottom arm is kind of nice and close to the bolster. And then gently roll yourself over, take your hands, interlace your hands and place the hands behind the neck. So this is kind of like an old school sit-up position, right? But we're not doing any sit-ups, I promise you. We're doing the anti-sit-up today. Now, fiddle if you can so that you feel like, yes, in fact, I do believe that my entire shoulder blade feels like it is on that bolster. Now, for those of you that have really sensitive low backs, rather than keeping your feet so that your ankles are directly underneath your knees like I have them right now, bring your knees up to your chest. So what that does when you bring your knees up to your chest is it doesn't allow you to go into that extension of your low back. So this is where I want you to be if you're that person that has a real sensitive low back. Now, if you're like, I don't have enough hip flexor strength and abdominal strength to hold my knees to my chest, okay, here's the trick. One hand does the head, the other hand does the legs. And that's how you're gonna do it today, all right? So now here's what I want you to do with this bolster. I want you to lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take a nice deep inhale, and literally imagine the entire rib cage cracking up and open over that bolster, holding the hand to the knees if you need to. One hand is definitely to the back of the neck, holding the head long and the chin tucked. It's about what is laying on top of the bolster opening up. All right, now in that position, can you give me a deep inhale into your chest and belly? And exhaling out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale into the chest and belly. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Unrotating that rib cage, dropping the feet to the floor. Now, we're going to do it one more time. You can do it with your knees to your chest if you know you need it for your low back. You can keep your feet flat on the floor and do it the middle of the roadway. Or I encourage you to do a double duty exercise here. So we're going to do heart opening, thoracic extension at the very exact same time as we're doing a nice good bracing, a nice good glute straightening, strengthening, also known as a bridge. So if you want to give it a try, feel free to do so. So take your hands and interlace the hands behind the neck and really get that nice good length through your neck. So your neck is long, your chin is kind of settled into your throat. Now, push your feet into the floor, brace through your abdominals, take your knees and push your knees up and over your ankles. So you have yourself so that you're not, you're not arching yourself nice and high in the air. Because if you do that, you're just going to invert your rib cage. You're in fact just lifting and squeezing through the gluteals and bracing through the abdominals as the knees push forward. All right, let's see if we can do the bracing, the squeezing of the glutes, and the opening of the heart all together. So keeping that neck long, that chin tucked, take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, open up through that rib cage. Oh boy, does that feel good. Maybe even a smile on our face. Take a deep inhale into the belly and chest. And then exhaling out. And one more time, deep inhaling in and exhaling out, unrotating, closing that rib cage and dropping that bridge to the floor. How did you do at home? 
Very good. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. Roll yourself over to the side. Use your bottom arm, your top hand, and push yourself up off that bolster. You've got it. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is lay entirely on the bolster now. Now, unfortunately, most of our trunks are longer than the bolster. So you can, if you want to, use a block or a pillow or something onto the top of the bolster that your head can support on. Today, what I'm going to do is have my head at the top of the bolster, and that just means my pelvis is going to be slightly off the bottom of the bolster. So do what you need to do at home, but we got to get up and on that bolster. So here's what I want you to do. Come to the top, I mean the front side of the bolster, so that the hip is just on it, and then drop the elbow off of it. And then in this position, Try to position yourself so that your shoulder, you still have a little bit of wiggle room of that, of that bolster on top. Then gently lay yourself down and roll yourself over. All right, so I'm going to move myself down a little bit. So my pelvis is not, is not supported by the bolster today. So because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage my abdominals, my glutes, and hold myself in a gentle bridge. We're going to do two things on this bolster. So the first one, the pelvis is off. The second one, the head is off, which is why I don't want you to use a yoga block today. Now, in this position, bring your hands up and over so that you have your palms facing together. Your thumbs are kind of together, but your thumbnails are kind of facing your face here. Now, what I want you to do is keeping the abdominals engaged, keeping the glutes engaged, slowly bend your elbows and bring those thumbs so that the thumbs line up with your forehead. So if you can imagine here, it's like your forearms are parallel to the floor. Looking good, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Take your palms and peel the palms away from one another so that the pinkies are away from one another. Then slowly, slowly begin to lower those pinkies and those floor, forearms towards the floor. Where and how far away from the floor can you get to? So can you touch those pinkies to the floor? beautiful heart opening here. We're kind of targeting a muscle in the front of our chest called our pectoralis minor. Can you lengthen your neck and settle your chin? Make sure those abdominals are bracing and those glutes are working to keep that pelvis level with the yoga bolster. All right. Now in this position, can you take a nice deep inhale into your chest? Oh, and then through that nose, exhale that air out. Let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale into the chest. And then exhaling out. You've got it. Slowly close those arms back up until those elbows and palms meet. Straighten those elbows up. And then take your hands, interlace your hands behind your neck and your head. Now, you have to wiggle your pelvis up on the bolster here. So just kind of move yourself up. So now the head is off the bolster, but the pelvis is on the bolster. So by all means, keep racing. It's good for us to keep racing to keep ourselves on the bolster. But now what we're going to be doing is dropping this very top part of our chest down and off the bolster while keeping our neck as long as we can. That's the trick. So. The reason I'm mentioning that is it's very easy just to drop your head to the floor right now, but that's all extension through your neck. We're not trying to do just extension through our neck. We're trying to open our heart. So we need to get that extension of the top of our chest here. So bring the hands behind the head, support the head, lengthen the neck, settle the chin into that throat. Picture where that sternum bone was, where your hands were pushing down at the very beginning of class. Brace through your abdominals, hold yourself here, take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, slowly lift that chest as the head begins to go towards the floor. All right, can you get that opening of that chest? Oh yeah, it's like you're cracking open every one of those, all 12 of those rib bones. Allow yourself to stay here, take a nice deep inhale into your belly, chest two, and then exhaling out. 
One more time, nice deep inhale in. And then exhaling out. So using those intercostal muscles and abdominal muscles, take a deep inhale and as you exhale, lift yourself back up and then eloquently roll off your bolster. Bottom elbow, top hand, push yourself up and then take that bolster and push it away. We are done with it. Once you're there, slowly lay yourself back down on your side and then gently roll back over onto your yoga mat. Oh, the heart is so much fun because it means we get to do so much exciting extension through our rib cage and our thoracic spine. Now in this position, allow yourself to keep your knees bent, your feet flat. Find that pelvis position that's comfortable for you. And then take a nice deep inhale, right knees coming to chest. And then as you exhale, gently pull that knee into your chest. You got it. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Holding this position, take a deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. One more breath here. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Slowly lowering the right knee to the floor. Take an inhale, lifting the left knee. Exhaling, pulling that knee into your chest. Nice deep inhale in. And then exhaling out. One more time here. Nice, deep inhaling in and then exhaling out. Then slowly lowering the left knee to the floor, going back to that gold post position we just were in when we were laying on that bolster, opening up through our chest. So see if you can find the position that your arms are um, parallel to one another. So goalposts or cactus arms, or it has many different names, but have it so that your elbows are bent 90 degrees on either side, and then simply turn your palms away from you so that it's the pinky side of your hands that are resting on the floor. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Now I want you to think about those muscles between your shoulder blades. Take a deep inhale and start to squeeze those muscles together. You'll feel your shoulder blades go up and down. You'll feel your rib cage lift off of the mat as you exhale, hold it there. Can you take another inhale, squeeze those shoulder blades, feel the chest lift, exhale, hold it there. One more time, nice deep inhale, squeeze, open that heart. And this time as you exhale, slowly drop them back down onto the floor. You've got it. Now start to hug yourself. So bring your right hand up to your left shoulder, your left hand. Let's bring the left arm underneath and place your left hand onto your right shoulder. Hug yourself nice and tight in this position. Take an inhale. And now as you exhale, Lift the shoulder blades a little bit off the floor. Make sure your neck stays long, your chin tucked. Just a little bit of a stretch there. And then slowly relax that down. Switch your arms. So now the right arm is underneath the left arm. You've got it. Same thing, a little bit of opening for those muscles we just really worked through. So hug yourself as tightly as you can. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, all right? Take that deep inhale, and on the exhale this time, really lift those elbows, stretch between those shoulder blades, and then slowly relax them back down onto the floor. All right, so we're gonna end doing a modification of our spinal twist today. So typically, we do our spinal twist from the bottom up. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do our spinal twist from the top down. And so what I want you to do is I want you to turn yourself right or left. You pick. It doesn't matter today. We're going to do both sides. I want you to turn yourself over onto your side and take your bottom hand and rest your bottom hand underneath your head. And then in that position, I want you to stack your knees so that your knees and your hips are in alignment, your shin bones and your knees and ankles are in alignment in a 90 degree position. Now, in this position, keep your head where it is. 
take your left hand, if that's the one that's on top, right hand if it's on top, and just rest it on the floor. Okay. Now, I want you to imagine right now what you're going to do is you're going to take your nose and wipe it into your right upper arm. So you're going to drop your head down. So it's a left, ro a right rotation of your head, left if you're on the opposite side. But I'm trying to wipe my nose into my right upper arm. I want you to keep your head and your neck in that position. Then with your left hand, take a nice deep inhale. Start to lift that arm up. And as you exhale, gently reach that hand behind you. Holding yourself there. Your heart sits on this left side. It's the reason that we need to really open up through our chest to really encourage our heart to open, both mentally and physically. So holding yourself in this position, your gaze is down to your mat. Feel where you feel the stretch the most through the front of your chest on this left side. Take a deep inhale into your chest here. Exhaling and imagine that arm falling further, but your gaze is still down towards that um, yoga mat and your right arm. One more breath here, deep inhaling in. And then exhaling out. And with that left arm now, inhaling it back to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, dropping it down on the floor in front of you. And then unrotating that head. You've got it. Now, you stay where you are, but just do a 180 turn over onto your opposite side. I'm actually going to push myself up and rotate myself to the other side so that I'm staying facing you. And then once I have myself in this position, I'm dropping down onto my left side. My left hand is coming to support underneath my head. My upper arm is, is at 90 degrees with my shoulders. So it's like my arm is parallel to my legs and my hips. And they are stacked one on top of the other. And then my shin bones, knees are at 90 degrees. And ankles and knees are aligned with one another. All right. Now that you have yourself in this position for our modification of our, of our spinal twist today, because it's all about the chest and heart opening, we're going to start with the rotation of the neck in the opposite direction. So imagine that you're trying to wipe your nose on your left arm. So kind of just turn your nose down. I know it's silly, but it creates a good safe rotation of your neck. So you turn your gaze down towards your mat. Your nose is kind of touching that upper arm. Right hand is out in front of you. So let's really open up through that chest on this right side today. So in this position of a kind of opposite modification of spinal twist with the right hand, take an inhale and lift it up towards the ceiling. Nose still touch, touches that upper arm. And then as you exhale, start to let that arm go back behind you. Keeping that nose touching, taking a deep inhale into the chest and belly here. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhaling in and then exhaling out. Right arm, inhaling it back up to the ceiling and then as you exhale, exhale dropping the arm down and then unrotating the head. All right, finally, slowly roll yourself back over onto your back. Find a good resting position of your shoulder blades on the floor. When you have that, find a good resting position of your pelvis in the center of your yoga mat. And then take one knee at a time towards your chest. Hands are holding each shin bone. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin here. Just take a nice gentle inhale. And then exhale, bringing those knees to your chest. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Slowly dropping the feet down to the floor. Slowly lowering the heels to the corner of your yoga mat. Allowing the arms to rest out to the side. Palms are lifted. Neck is nice and long. Chin is settled. What a wonderful job we did to open up through our heart today. 
So a couple things may happen for the rest of your day. You might feel unusually relaxed since you targeted that vagus nerve at the beginning of class. You might feel just generally settled through your heart, less tension, both from a physical and a mental perspective. Heart rate might be a little lower, blood pressure might be a little lower immediately after class. You may feel that that neck tension, that low back tension, that shoulder tension is a little bit better. Many, many reasons to open our heart. Allow yourself to be nice and still now. Picture where your heart is in your chest. So if you think about that sternum bone, it's just to the left. As you see that chest there, it's got four chambers. It's not like the heart like Valentine's Day. It really has no shape similar to that. But if you want to picture that, you can. But it has four beautiful chambers of muscle that just pump beautiful blood everywhere in our body. When your heart is happy, your mind and your body are very happy. So just picture where that heart is right now. Visualize that heart however you want to. And maybe put a gentle smile on your face. I can't necessarily tell you to put a smile on your heart, but imagine what that might look like. And just let yourself be still. And then when you're ready, gently wiggling your fingers and your toes and doing some circles with your ankles and your wrists. And then sliding up one leg followed by the other. And gently letting yourself roll back over on that side. Resting there for a moment, taking a nice deep inhale and exhale, maybe two or three. And then when you're ready on an exhale, bottom elbow, top hand, pushing yourself up into a seated position. Finding yourself into easy pose. Hands are to your heart. Smiles are on our faces. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes. The highest of you. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs>